Attorney General Barr, I wonder if you could tell us about the conversation between yourself and Bob Mueller shortly after your summary was issued. He called you? No, I called him. What prompted you to call him? The letter. Your letter, or his, his le letter? His letter. His letter. So you called him. Yeah. And how long did the conversation last? I don't know, maybe uh, 10, 15 minutes. There were multiple witnesses in the room. It was on the speaker phone. Who was in the room? Uh, among others, the deputy attorney general was in the room. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah, several other people who had been working on the project. Members of your staff? Yes, and, and the deputy staff. And as best you can recall, in the language that was used, who, who said what to whom? Um, I said, Bob, what's with the letter? You know, why don't you just pick up the phone and call me if there's an issue? And uh, he uh, said that they were concerned about the way the media was playing this and felt that it was important to get out the summaries, which they felt would put their work in proper context uh, and uh, avoid some of the confusion that was emerging. And I asked him if he uh, felt that my letter was misleading or inaccurate. And he said, no, that the press, uh, he felt that the press uh, coverage was, and it was, and that a, a completer, a, a more complete picture of his thoughts and the context and so forth would, would deal with that. And uh, I, I suggested that I would rather just get the whole report out than just putting out stuff uh, seriatim and, and piecemeal. And, uh, but I said I would think about it some more. And uh, the next day I put out a letter that made it clear that no one should read the March 24th letter as a summary of the overall report and that a full account of Bob's, uh, Mueller's thinking uh, was going to be in the report and everyone could, would have access to. But there's nothing in Robert Mueller's letter to you about the press. His complaint to you is about your characterization of the report, correct? Well, the letter speaks for itself. It does, and in fact, in response to your question, why not just pick up the phone, this letter was an extraordinary act. A career prosecutor rebuking the Attorney General of the United States, memorializing in writing, right? I, I know of no other instance of that happening. Do you? Uh, well, I, I don't consider Bob at this stage a career prosecutor. He's had a career as a prosecutor. Well, he's he was a very head, eminent he, prosecutor. He was the head of the FBI for 12 years. Um, he's a career he's had a, he's had a law enforcement career, yeah. professional. Right. Yep. I know of no other instance of. But he was also a political appointee, and he was a political appointee with me at the Department of Justice. I don't, I, you know, it, the letter's a bit snitty, and I think it was probably written by one of his staff people. Did you make a memorandum of your conversation? Huh? Did you make a memorandum? No, I didn't or make did a anyone memorandum. Else, what? Um, did anyone, either you or anyone on your staff, memorialize your conversation with Robert Mueller? Yes. Who did that? Uh, there were notes taken of, of the call. May we have those notes? No. Why not? Why should you have them? I'll tell you, we got to end this, but I'm going to write a letter to Mr. Mueller, and I'm going to ask him, is there anything you said about that conversation he disagrees with? And if there is, he can come and tell us. Right. So the hearing is now over. And if, if Senator I may Blumenthal, just... I promise you that if there's any, Mr. Mueller will have a chance to make sure that the conversation relayed by Attorney General Barr is accurate. And I'm going to give him a chance to correct anything you said that he finds misleading or inaccurate, and that will be it. Okay. 